Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of So Tell Us Time. Today, we are really excited to be with you guys. It is a good day. It is November. We love November. That is like the year is ending. This is so crazy. And we've got a really good topic for you today. In fact, it's called Don't Retreat, which is a phenomenal title with yesterday being... Veterans Day, right? So hopefully you guys all enjoyed your day yesterday, had a great Veterans Day. Hey, thank you so much to all of our veterans out there. We absolutely love you, appreciate you. You're the complete best and the best of us, that's for sure. So we love you guys and we're grateful for all that you have done, all that you have sacrificed and big, big, big thanks over here at So Tell Us. Uh, today's episode is really, really good because I can tell you that um, we're going to be talking about a strategy that has created tremendous wealth and market domination in America. And the thing is, is over the last six months, we have definitely heard a lot of companies talking about the fact that they have been struggling. It's been a rough year for a lot of people. In fact, um, what's interesting is at the beginning of the year, uh, it kind of started out strong. The very, very beginning, the first quarter was pretty strong for a lot of businesses, but then we just saw it decline as we've gotten closer to uh, what I would say is election day, right? And so um, hopefully now that the elections are over and things are um, going to be looking up for our country and for businesses and consumers, we can start to feel it release and relax. And I will tell you one funny thing about that is, man, I was bombarded. I was telling the guys talking in, in the office today and it was like I, prior to the elections, bombarded. You couldn't get on social media. You couldn't get onto things like YouTube or anything like that without seeing just tons of political stuff, right? <clears throat> and amazingly yeah. enough, today is when I noticed, pulled up YouTube and the shorts that just started to pop up we're back to things that I just like, things I like watching. I'm a big RV guy. I I love RVs. I love RV tours. I love touring the country. Um, and that is what I normally see is RV things. And it is back to that. Prior to that, <laughs> all I would see, my wife was like, dude, <clears throat> heck, are you just watching a bunch of uh, political stuff? I'm like, no, I hate political stuff. Uh, it was all that I could find on YouTube shorts and on YouTube. But now, Life is going to be back to normal, it seems like. It's back to my <laughs> awesome RV stuff. So hopefully we're that's a, a sign of the times and, and it's a good sign. So Troy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you jump in here and let's get started in talking about today's episode. Yeah, ab absolutely. So like I said, uh, we've seen, we've started to see some businesses that are pulling back or retreating when it comes to their marketing this year. And that is a big mistake. And we want to just talk about this today because we want to stop this, stop businesses from making that mistake. You know, don't retreat, move forward. And we're going to give you some examples of where tremendous wealth has been created. There's been tremendous market gain because of that. Um, yep. And now is the time to do it, right? Whether things continue, like, you know, whether things continue to kind of go bad with the economy and things like that or whether things go great, it doesn't matter. This applies to, you know, either side of that. Well, um, and, and really quick too, Troy, I mean, we, you guys know, we practice what we preach here. In the first quarter, we, we spend a lot of money in marketing for our own uh, products and our own services, right? In this last quarter, we are not spending any less. In fact, we are branching out. We are you know, implementing new strategies. We are even spending more money which is the opposite of what we're talking about today, meaning that we're seeing a lot of these customers that are saying, oh, I've got to cut back. I've got to, I don't know. I'm, you know, they're re like Troy said, I like it. They're retreating, right? Yeah. And we have been through this a lot over the last 25 years. We've, we have seen the markets go like this, right? Business up and down. We've been through it. We all went through a pandemic, right? One thing that we have done and been consistent in is our marketing. And when others are retreating, we double down, right? So, yep. uh, and I think Troy's going to talk about that, but yep, go ahead. exactly. So I wanted to share a story because um, stories are a great way to learn. And we're going to talk about a company that we all know, Procter and Gamble. And so this is actually going all the way back to the depression, right? So this isn't some new thing, some new idea of how to grow your business. This is something that's worked 
for a very, very long time. So Procter and Graham, uh, sorry, Procter and Gamble during the depression, um, they made a commitment to their advertising, right? And so they actually doubled down on their advertising dur during the depression. Um, especially when it came to one of the big forms of advertising back then was the radio. So they were doubling down on their radio spend when other companies were cutting back. <clears throat> and you know what that did? It was great actually, because when the other companies started cutting back, now there was less ads on the radio, but the radio station needed to sell ads and they needed to make money. So they were actually giving Procter and Gamble a really good deal to take <laughs> up those advertising spots. Right. So now their marketing was going even farther for the same you know, amount of money. And uh, they really pioneered the concept of branded entertainment, meaning like what they did was they actually started sponsoring daytime radio dramas. You know, uh, if you can remember, I mean, for, you know, most of us probably don't remember. I don't even remember. But I, I remember hearing about, you know, all the little radio shows that were like a story and they had all the sounds and the people doing all that stuff. They started sponsoring that. And it was, you know, this is brought to you by Procter and Gamble, you know, blah, 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 blah. And um, they increased their brand recognition and consumer loyalty during a time of real economic hardship. So, you know, by committing to the advertising when everyone else was pulling back, they really started to grow their brand, right? Everybody started to know who they were because that's what they were hearing all the time through the advertising. The other thing they did was um, really understanding their consumer needs. So during that time, what they focused on was essential goods like soap, right? Um, which of course, soap, you know, was still in demand even during hard economic times. So that's a really good lesson to think about, you know, with your business, if things slow down, what are the essential services that people need, right? And need from you and focus on marketing those, right? Really push those. Um, that, and that's what they did. They really focused on that part of their company. Um, and the other thing they did is they maintained affordable pricing and emphasize the value that they were giving to the customer, ensuring that their products were accessible to even struggling households. And that's another really important thing. When people start, you know, if you're, you know, you have a recession or things like that, and people start to tighten down, you know, their, you know, their budget and how much they can spend and things like that, they're going to look for, you know, the value based, you know, value and price together. So, you know, that was a really important thing for them was we're going to keep an affordable price so that we don't lose part of the market that just can't afford our product, right? And they kept their value there as well. Another thing they did was they did really innovative marketing strategies. So they were one of the first to really leverage coupons and direct marketing to reach out to those cost conscious consumers. And that was really important too, right? Um, that's how they were getting to these people was like, Hey, let's give them coupons. So, so they go, you know, because again, when things are tight, when money's tight, you're looking to save every little penny you can. So if I can get a coupon and I can use that to buy this product over the other product, you know, I'm going to do it. So that was one of the things that they really leveraged and moved forward. They did a lot of direct marketing which is really important, right? It wasn't just marketing out there. They were directly marketing to the people that needed their services. And in today's environment, that is so important. Trevor and I talk about that all the time when it comes to like, you know, doing like Google ads versus doing Facebook ads, right? Mm -hmm. One is a very, Google ads is a very direct marketing. You know, you are marketing to the people that are looking for your services, whereas Facebook ads and Trevor's talked about this before, you're, you know, you're interrupting what they are doing, right? Mm -hmm. They're not looking for your service when they're going through Facebook. Um, you're interrupting it and you're hoping to capture them. So one of the things that Procter & Gamble did was they really focused on, I'm going to market to the people that are looking for my services, right? So really important there. Um, and they were actually among the first to heavily invest in market research and actually understand their consumer. So that's another really big thing, right? Making sure that you understand your consumer or like a lot of times in marketing, we talk about your avatar, right? What is your perfect client? What is that avatar? And the better you understand them, the better you can market to them. You know, and again, the better you understand them versus how your competitor understands understands them, the better your marketing is going to work versus their marketing. Um, so that's another really important thing. 
And another thing that was really big for them was long-term vision, right? So instead of retreating, they actually viewed the depression as an opportunity to really build their brand loyalty and increase their market share. And so when the economy recovered, they were actually positioned as a dominant force in the market. You know, everyone else had pulled back. Everyone else's brands got weaker. They pushed forward, got a much stronger brand. And then as people got more money, right, as they came out of the depression, what was the brand they trusted? It was Procter & Gamble. So that's where they spent their money going forward was with them. So they took a huge portion of the market share because they didn't retreat during the depression, um, which is, again, really important. Um, and again, this example really underscores the power of staying active in your marketing during challenging times, right? And aligning your efforts with you, the, what your consumer considers their priorities. So um, we wanted to share this story with you because, like I said, this is a huge company, right, that could have been crushed. They could have gone under in the depression, but they actually came out, you know, way stronger, way more powerful and a much bigger market share because they chose not to retreat and they move forward. Now for us as Sotellus, so that's way back in the 1930s, right? Yep. Sotellus, let's just go back a couple of years to 2020. And Trevor, do you want to kind of share what we did during the pandemic and the growth that, and the growth we had? Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked about this before in previous episodes, but COVID, <clears throat> excuse me, COVID hit. Sorry, dealing with a cold here. So I'm kind of <laughs> feeling froggy, uh, as you can probably tell in my voice or who knows. But when COVID hit, we all went through that. And what happened was we have competitors. Like when it comes to Sotellus and our review platform and our reputation platform, we have huge competition. I'm talking one company's had well over $200 million invested in them. The other one over $300 million invested in them. And then there's Sotellus. And we've had nothing other than Troy and I's own money invested in the company as well as our time, energy, and efforts. And so these are definitely Goliaths, right? We love talking about the David and the Goliaths. We love helping the Davids beat the Goliaths and we have the knowledge, energy, and efforts to do that. So that's what we do is we always fight against these Goliaths and we want to retain and maintain full control of our companies, which is why we've never gone down that investment route. Not saying that that's not an okay route to go down, but I can tell you what, you can grow just as well when you utilize your own money and you um, really think through the things that you are going to do. And, and, and this is an example of it, of when you have other people's money, you, you are more willy nilly with it. Meaning they've gone out and they have huge, massive buildings. Now we've bought our own building as well, which is great, but they've got these huge, massive buildings They're They have so many employees that they just waste money left and right. And when it comes to their marketing, they waste money like crazy. They'll be running ads for anything and everything to do with reviews and reputation, even though it's not the right terms, right? They can't keep up with it. They're throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars a month at their online marketing and they can't keep up with it. Um, and there's a whole, I mean, we could go in depth about all of that and, and what they should be doing and what we are doing compared to them. But, but the point is when COVID hit, they reduced their uh, ad spend significantly. In fact, uh, for periods of time, they completely shut off their ad spend and their online marketing, which gave us a great opportunity when they're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and we're spending, you know, 20 to $30,000 a month. We're talking about a month. Uh, they obviously are going to be like one and two and we're usually number three. Well, when they shut off their budgets, we saw that we jumped to number one. And so what did we do? We doubled down. We started spending more money during COVID when they, um, disappeared, we said, this is, this is an opportunity to really jump in and take some of the market away from them. And there, and, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why they actually had to do that. And we didn't have to do that. Right. We were able to continue to spend money because we are conscious of the money that we're spending on a regular basis where they are very willy nilly 
because it's somebody else's dollar. And that's just not how we like to run the business. When I spend money, I know where it's going. I know how many of its little friends are coming back with it. So um, we were able to really dominate during COVID when our competitors lost a big portion of the market and um, had to lay off a whole lot of people. We actually grew. Our company grew, our clients grew, our um, employees, we were able to bring on more employees during that time. So being smart, I can tell you what, preparing for the future and being smart with your money and, may, and, and especially spending money while things are good allows you to have the funds to spend money when things are not like a pandemic, right? Absolutely. So yeah, Trevor, thanks for sharing that. Um, like I said, you know, COVID was a great, great year for us as far as growth, um, because our competitors were gone. And even during that year, like we have, you know, we're in so many different industries. We had several yeah. industries that were shut down, you know, like the childcare industry, they were shut yeah. down. They, you know, and so even though we had those customers that were couldn't use our services at that time and we had to pause their services for them because they couldn't even operate their busy or sorry their business we continue to grow right? right because the competition stepped they retreated and we moved forward and um it just propelled our company forward yeah. so that's what we wanted to talk about today because we want to make sure again we don't know what's going to happen with the economy going forward we're very hopeful for uh <laughs> things to turn around and to get better that's what we're planning on right but we also have a plan if things don't get better right we know exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to continue to grow even if things slow down and that's the key and this is one of the biggest strategies that again most businesses the first thing they do they see a hiccup they see a bump in the road and they hit the brakes right um and if you want to take it from there you know it's like you can either hit the brakes and slow down or you can hit the gas and you can hit that bump and you can soar right you can fly mm -hmm. through the air um mm -hmm. and that's what we do so and that's what we suggest that our clients do as well now again everything is done intelligently right mm -hmm. you need mm -hmm. to make sure that you have your roi that you know your numbers all of those things but if you know those things then you can be successful so yep. anything else you want to go over trevor before we hit the homework yeah, I'll just give one example. Um, back in like 08, when the housing market crashed, okay, um, something that people did is they overreacted. And I feel like that's uh, what a lot of people did even during COVID. That's what a lot of people do when uh, bad situations happen, right? When the When something falls apart and they don't know exactly what to do, they kind of seem to overreact. And, and they did that back in 08. And I'll give you the example people's homes went upside down. So we had bought in our first, we had bought our first house, Chelsea and I, uh, in 05. And when OA hit, and it was amazing during that time, right? Like we bought our first house, it was like $142,000. And within a year it had doubled in, in value, you know, and it was amazing. And so those first few years were just awesome. Well, and that's here in Arizona. In 08, it hits. And people go from, you know, I go from my home purchasing it for like $142,000 to having it be well over two hundred and uh, like $80,000 to it dropping to like the value of my home was $60,000 during that time. Okay. And people were like, oh my gosh. And they freaked out. And a lot of people just abandoned their homes, right? They just walked away. They, they in my opinion, overreacted. Well, actually, yeah. I was actually thinking about this the other day, Trevor. I was actually talking to someone about this. And I remember your neighbor was a real estate agent. Yeah. And he walked away from his house because he said to you, this house will never, <laughs> ever be worth yeah. what I bought it for. And guess what? Yeah. I think that house is worth five times what he bought it. Yeah. Well, maybe four times what he bought it for. Oh, now. that same house that I bought for $142,000 today is well over $300,000. So it never will get back. No, I think it will. But, and so people <laughs> overreacted. And here's the thing is I would say to people, so they would all walk away. They were, they were like leaving in droves, right? And just turning the homes back over to uh, filing bankruptcy and doing all these things and turning the homes back over to the mortgage companies. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that at all. Um, my income didn't change. Uh, 
like my bills didn't change. The only thing that changed was my home value at that time was lower, much lower, significantly lower, obviously, than what I had even paid for it. But nothing in my life other than that changed. And so I just stuck with it. In fact, during that time, I stuck with it for a while. And during that time, we ended up buying our second home and turning that home into a rental property. Um, and then down years later, we ended up selling that uh, investment property or that rental property and making our money back. It was no big deal. But here's the thing is, is that the point was people, I would say to people, well, did your income change? Did you lose your job? No, 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 I didn't lose my job. Okay, so did your, but did your income change at all? No, 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 I didn't, I, it didn't change at all. I said, so nothing's in your life has changed except for, you know, in, uh, in an account somewhere, the numbers flopped and the home's not worth what you paid for it originally. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, to me, it was an overreaction, all of the people. And then it just also kind of played into the bad parts of it. And so that's the thing is, guys, I stuck with it. I made money off of that home. I turned it into a, an income, right, a rental property, and then was able to sell the home as well um, and made good choices. And because I made good choices during that time and I didn't overreact, I was able to get into my next home. And then now we're into our, our next home and we're in our home that we'll probably stay in for the rest of our lives. Um, until maybe we're old and then we want to downsize because our house is very large right now. But the point being is it was the same thing <clears throat> during COVID. Our competitors overreacted. Um, yes, did we, did, was the economy affected? Yes. But had we prepared and planned and we uh, properly before this even happened? Yes. We were already in a good place. We were already marketing. When money was flowing prior to COVID, we were putting money aside and, and also reinvesting. So I tell people all the time, look, if you're not even going to spend money on marketing right now, it, but let's say you would need to spend $3,000 a month in marketing, then you should be setting that $3,000 a month aside in a bank account that doesn't get touched. And that way, if something changes, you have all this money saved up that you can then invest in marketing. Uh, so anyways, point being is let's not overreact. Okay. Troy and I, we've weathered these storms a million times. I heard business owners this year, they were talking about, well, you know, all oh, the things are, you know, it's not as, it's not as good as it was and da, 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 da. And I said, yeah, but, but before it was ridiculous, right? Like it was so good. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. So like you're down, but are you out? No, no, no. I mean, we're definitely not out. Oh, okay. So are you still profitable? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still profitable. Oh, okay. So then why are you abandoning? Why are you abandoning everything? Why are you freaking out? Or in my opinion, overreacting? You still had the money. They still had the money to do it. They could have been investing and they chose not to. And I think that's a big mistake. So we've, we, we have felt and seen everything that everybody else has felt and seen, but we have continued to spend the money because we know we're going to get through this and we're going to be stronger when we do. We're going to be stronger because of what we've done. So just think of that. Just make sure you're really looking at your dollars. Make sure you're really looking at your money and don't overreact. Okay. I understand that some people are going, no, my business, I'm, I've got 25% of my business left that I had, you know, I lost 75%. I understand that. I understand that there's certain situations. Um, those are unique. But there's also the people out there that are overreacting because business was so good that it was like overly good. Now they're maybe back to where they kind of were before and they're like, oh, it's not as good. And it's usually because they got used to a lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. And that's a whole nother topic that we'll get onto. So, all right, guys. Well, we love you. We appreciate you. Let's jump into the homework. Take a look at your marketing and see where you are getting your best return. If your competitors are pulling back, then take a look at increasing your budget. Can you increase your budget when other people are decreasing their budget? Because guess what? People are still out there. People need their carpets cleaned. People need their trees trimmed. People need stumps grinded out. People need, you know, fallen over trees taken out. They need their homes inspected. Um, they need restoration done when a flood happens. They need ACs fixed. They need their homes cleaned. Some There's still a lot of people out there that just physically can't clean their own homes. So even in the, the cleaning service, the maid industry, right? There are still people out there. There is still business to be had and done. Who's going to get it? Are you going to get it or is your competitor going to get it? 
So if you are not marketing currently, you need to start looking at marketing. You need, it's time. It is time to market, my friends. And I'm telling you, we are going to be on an upswing. Okay. We've been doing this a long time and I'm telling you, we are going to be on an upswing. So anyways, we love you. As we said, we appreciate you guys and we will check you out on the next episode of So Tell Us Time.